Hi, this is Mike Cicchini with DennyGeek.com. We're here at San Diego Comic-Con with Josh Williamson, writer of The Flash and the upcoming Batman Superman series from DC Comics. How you doing, Josh? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm How beat. Show you. <laughs> uh, it's been good. I just now realize I'm losing my voice, like just now. But uh, the con's been awesome. Yeah, it's been a really great, uh, a fun convention this year. There's a lot going on, and it was very intense. A lot of stuff you got to do, you know, running around. But uh, it's always great. We get a lot of energy um, from being around the readers and being around the fans, you know, like being able to talk to them and see what they like. It gives us a lot of energy to power through the convention, you know, and, and then also power through getting to work next week. <laughs> well, this is kind of a unique time for you because mm -hmm. you have a major storyline ending in The Flash yeah. and then you're getting ready to launch, uh, you're getting ready to launch a brand new book in August. Yeah, it's been a lot of work lately, but I'm really excited about it, yeah. So. What's been the what's been the feedback on Flash Year One from that? Oh, it's been great. Yeah, it's been really awesome. A lot of positivity about it. I mean, we were I was never worried about stuff, but you know, when you're trying something different, you know, you get out there and it's like, it's interesting because you know, you say I'm gonna do a Flash Year One, everyone kind of knows what that is already. Like they kind of in their head, even with the TV show or the comics, like, well, I know what that is. I know what that is. And we were doing something different because we were doing something that was like Flash Year One mixed um, with like Flash Dark Knight Returns, you know. Um, and, and you know, in the original um, Showcase 4, which is the first appearance of Barry Allen, there's two stories in there. There's one story about how he got his powers and he goes up against the turtle, it's the first villain he ever fought. And then there's a story in the back, there's a backup story about him traveling to the future for the first time. And so I basically took that as like my springboard for Flash Year One of like, he'll be fighting the turtle, he'll be going to the future. And so I knew there were some people who were like hardcore Flash fans that were gonna be like, I see what you're doing. Uh, and it was interesting, I was at a panel once and a, somebody came up and I was keeping it super secret, the future stuff. Like I was never, it was never on the covers, we weren't gonna talk about it. And then somebody went up there and was like, you know in Showcase 4 he travels to the future the first time. And I was like, shush, shush, stop talking, shush, shush, shush. Um, but the, the, the feedback's been really great. And I think once people saw that it was gonna be a little different than they expected, I think it caught their attention. And then they could see that I was, it, it really is a love letter to the Flash mythology, to Barry Allen, to the history of the Flash. I think people can see that. But it's also important that even if you're a huge Flash fan, you're getting something out of it, that somebody who's coming into it brand new is getting something out of it. And I've also been able to get people who are saying like, oh yeah, I can give this to somebody. Like if somebody's coming in, they want to know about the Flash from the TV show or the movie, and they've never read anything, we've been able to create something that is easily accessible for them. It starts at the beginning and you can, you know, dive right in with that character. And so the feedback's been really good. It's been it's been really awesome. And I think a lot of it has to do with Howard Porter's art and the series, like Howard Porter is doing. I think the art of his life, you know, I think he's the best Flash artist of all time. And the stuff he's doing is just amazing. I've really loved what he's done in this series in particular. Mm -hmm. and, and he's obviously no stranger to the Flash and he's no stranger to your run on the Flash. Mm -hmm. But that last issue, some of the stuff he did, especially the, the slide into it panel, is yeah. really breathtaking. Oh, did you read 75? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so you know. All right, I wasn't sure. Yeah, and it's cool. Right. And, yeah, and this yeah, isn't yeah. going okay. out until after, oh, okay, uh, until right after it yeah, comes so out. So all, let's talk spoilers. There's all kinds of teases in there. You know, there's <laughs> yeah. that part um, where we cut back to the present day stuff, which is drawn by Scott Collins. And there's that one uh, page where it's um, Barry running and talking about positivity, but also talking about how he recognizes that like there is a lot of, of um, challenges ahead of him, but he's not afraid to run to them, right? And then we present all these little teases, all these things that are coming. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about all that stuff. Like there's all kinds of little stuff in there that is, if you're paying attention, you get in there, you can see all the clues of like what's coming in the book. Well, that was one of the things that I liked about this because it's not just a straight origin story. Mm -hmm. It comes at a time in the book where it makes sense for this story to be told. That was really important to us, yeah. Yeah, and it kind of opens that way and then it closes that way. Mm -hmm. So like for fans who have been reading this for 75 issues, mm -hmm. it really is kind of an organic progression. Yeah. But that final page of the main story yeah, yeah, yeah. in Flash oh, 75. Yeah. This is really funny. You're the first person to talk to me about this because I didn't realize. I knew it was out there kind of, and I've talked to people a little bit about it. But yeah, this is the first conversation. So was that surprising for you? That was really cool. Yeah, it was cool, huh? So yeah, let's nice. talk about those panels because there's like six panels, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so how far into the future of your run do those six panels take us? Oh, to the end. Really? Yeah, I would say to the end. Like I have, a, a, it, that basically was me saying, I think there's a couple little things that will happen throughout, but really there was enough in there. To, to, I was trying to say like, I have a lot more stories to tell, right? I have a lot more things I want to do with this character. Um, there's been things we set up in the first arc that haven't been paid off yet. You know, little things we've been seeding throughout. But really that was me showing you like, there is a lot of stuff coming. Um, but yeah, like I have an idea of where I would want to be at, like in the story when I get to the end. Like I know what I want the closing pages, the last pages to be when I eventually get there. I don't have an issue number. Cause really it's always, it, it, we shouldn't think about the numbers. It's about the story, you know, and it's very much about 
you know, what is best for the story. And so I, I know the story, like I know the beats, I know the things I want to build to get there, and I, I tease pretty much all of it. There's a couple things, but pretty much all of it uh, in that page, yeah. So you said there isn't really an issue number, so this isn't a situation, like Tom King with Batman for a while had mm -hmm. said, yeah, I've got about 100 issues. You know, I've got mm -hmm. about 100 issues in me of Batman story from my big Batman story. We're at Flash 75. Yeah, I've written up to 82. I've written, I'm pretty far out, um, and I know what's happening for a while in the book, so it just depends, you know, it depends on a lot of factors, but it always comes down to, do I have the stories to tell? And I think if I ever hit a moment where I'm like, I'm out, like I'm out of stories, that's the time to leave. Okay. Uh, so we'll see, like, that's how, and, and DC really responds well to that. They respond well when you come and say, I have a story to tell. Um, within that story, and obviously, mm -hmm. so now we have these six panels that you say take us potentially to the end of your run. Yeah. But we know that at some point in the middle of all that, mm -hmm. there's gonna be a crisis. Maybe. Okay, but <laughs> we're a year after, when we were here last year, uh -huh. we were talking about the last page of, of Flash War. Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. which said the magic word. Yeah, it did, it did. It's like, that's, <laughs> hey man, listen, I play the long game. Yeah, clearly. Right. I'm all about the long con, so you just gotta see. It'll all it'll all add up eventually. And that's, okay. That villain in particular, he's also in that issue. There's a tease of him uh, with Godspeed in '75, and and uh, and yeah, like we're we're slowly getting there. We're slowly getting there. You'll see. Like, but I am really am building this gigantic story. I just don't like to talk about it like that as much. I don't like to go out and brag and then be like, oh, I'm building this big thing. I'm doing all this stuff. But it's like I am, I guess. Um, but yeah, it, there there is a lot of, of fun stuff coming. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we should just start then for what we know is coming next, yeah. which is Death of the Speed Force. Mm -hmm. That starts in 76. Yeah, it's immediately after. And, and that uh, is a big part of the, my, my plan for the next year. That's a really big piece. And uh, it's, it's, the, yeah, it's the next story arc. It starts right in 76, right after 75. And is that a six-parter, or does that go beyond that? It's a six-parter, but um, I think what will happen is, is you'll, you'll see it kind of breaks up because it's gonna it's gonna be a roller coaster ride of a story. Like the beginning part, you're gonna think it's about one thing, and then it kind of quickly turns into something else, um, and then it starts to set up because it, it's very tied into the year of the villain stuff. Um, because Barry is dealing with the idea that the Speed Force is dying, and he has to make a decision: um, it, does he save the new Force users, or does he save the Speed Force? He's Barry, so of course he's gonna save the new Speed Force users. But there's a problem there, there's conflicts there. And how do you save these people as you feel your powers are losing? They're starting to die out. So what do you do, right? It's like, do I go save my powers, then save them? Like there's this challenging there. And then there's all kinds of other things brewing that are coming at the same time. Uh, and then the, one of the biggest problems is the rogues. You know, it's like Captain Cole got about Rev in 75, and uh, now he has help from Lex Luthor. And so he, with the Year of the Villain stuff, and so you have this subplot of Captain Cold and the rogues running through uh, Death of the Speed Force. And so Death of the Speed Force is a six part arc, but it's really the beginning of a major story that's gonna carry over the next year. This is like the first chapter of it. And the ramifications of that story will impact um, not only Barry, but a lot of other speedsters. And once you get to the end of that, then you know, you got the rogues. So there's a lot coming, but yeah, that the Speed Force is something I've wanted to do for a while, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I mean, Rafael Sandoval is doing most of the issues, and he's doing amazing work. We actually just sent the first issue to press, and it looks awesome, and it's really exciting. There's a lot of, we, we've actually been able to um, hide the fact that uh, a major character is returning in that arc that hasn't been seen in the Flashbook, I don't even know, maybe 10 plus years. He's in that arc, and we, he's not on any of the covers. He's not on any of the solicits. Like somehow we were able to hide it. So when people read this arc, there's gonna be some surprises in there. You're gonna see some some stuff that I think people will be uh, will be surprised by. Yeah. Is he one of the speedsters that we see uh, in that one panel in Flash 75? No comment. Okay. Yeah. That thing, <laughs> see that 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 the interesting thing about that. Um, I'll tell you a little thing if you didn't notice it. But in 75, you have all those speedsters right in the forefront. If you look close, there are three silhouettes in the back. Mm -hmm. You see them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was on purpose. So yeah, that's all. That's part of the story, you know. And I was curious if people were gonna notice that. They're gonna be like, oh man, this is really awesome. Who are these three silhouettes? Like that was that was on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's interesting too that they've kind of chosen Captain Cold as the focal point mm -hmm. here of the villain. Because I feel like it's been a while since since Snart has been kind of like a traditional villain in the DC universe. That was one of my goals from the offset when I got the job, was to bring the rogues back to being villains. Because I think for a long time they were anti-heroes and I don't see them as that they're the rogues. 
you know, like that. Yeah. That's what they are. Like all they care about are themselves mm -hmm. and each other, you know. Um, and so one of the, I have been building this story for a while of this dynamic of them recognizing that they need each other and that they're better together. And um, but I've been slowly building up to this this moment that this this the him getting out of Bell Rev and deciding I'm gonna go get my family back together and all that. Um, we've been building to this, and I feel like this is gonna be the biggest rogue story that anyone has ever done. When we eventually get to that story, the big Captain Cold and the rogue story that'll be after we've got the Speed Force, I feel like that's the biggest rogues thing that anyone has ever done. And um, it gets pretty crazy. To me, it'll be kind of like, uh, it won't be my last word on the rogues, but it'll probably be the last big rogue story that I get to do. Um, I, there's other things after that that I'm gonna do with some of them, but for the most part, that'll be like the really big rogue story. And it'll be part of the Eurovillain and stuff that we've been building to. Because for so long, I mean, you know, Thawne and like any reverse flash, I think, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of this is the influence of the TV show. Yeah. It's kind of really taken over as just like the ultimate flash villain. But I feel like with, there's, there's almost more to be said with mm -hmm. Snart in some ways. There is a lot to say with Snart. There's a lot of things about his character I find very interesting because if you want to get like deep into Snart, it, it's the idea that like Snart is a family man, right? Just a different version of it. And Barry is a family man, right? Different version of it. And if you look at how Barry looks up to his parents, right? And he looks up to the values that his mom and dad had and he wants to be like them, right? Like the lessons that his parents taught him, he looks up to and he says, I wish I could be like them. I wish I could have, like, like he looks up to the advice they gave him, right? Whereas in Leonard, looks up to his father and is like, my father's a loser. I never want to be him, right? So it's this interesting contrast, but they both had the same end game with that, the same end result. They both became very concerned about family, right? But they have just different versions of it. And so I like playing with that contrast with both of them. They're both family men, but just have very different ideas of it. Um, I don't know if I would ever, I would ever make, I don't know, might be, there might be some Captain Cole fans out there that are like, he's the number one villain, he's the number one villain, he's the number one film, but I almost feel like it's different, you know? It's like, there's something about him that kind of puts him to the side. He's still a major villain, uh, but he's not Thawne. Like, Thawne is definitely the main one. Don, Thawne is definitely his, um, yeah, Eobard is easily like the arch nemesis, you know? I ask you this every time. Are we any closer to seeing I know Jay what you're me. <laughs> He's in that spread. I know, but that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, I have a plan. I'm, I have a plan. You know, Scott and James are going to be using him yeah. in, uh, in the Justice League Doom War mm -hmm. uh, stuff that's coming up. But I have a plan. So my, my answer to you is uh, soon. Okay. Soon. Is this I can't like say an, exactly when, but soon. Is this like an annual kind of thing? Or is he, he going to sneak oh, into man. one of these other stories? Um, just keep reading. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Bye.